Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Before we start with our today's analysis, a quick gentle reminder. Baiju's Exam Prep IAS has already launched its official Telegram channel. What is that you have to do? Follow the link given in the description box or scan this QR code. This will take you to our official Telegram channel. Join the channel so that you get all the current affairs related updates. Let's get started and look into the first article. The first article says, how has the Supreme Court expanded abortion rights? Let us try and understand what is this article all about. We have one of the important laws when it comes to abortion. What is it? We have the medical termination of Pregnancy Amendment Act of 2021. What if there is a woman who is pregnant but she wants to abort the fetus? Will she be able to do? Yes. There are three characteristics that we have to look at. One is a woman who is less than 20 weeks of pregnant. In in that particular case, what she will require is the opinion of one single doctor. So there is a woman, she is less than 20 weeks pregnant. In this case, if she has to abort the fetus, what she will require is the opinion of one single doctor. What if the woman is pregnant and she is between 20 to 24 weeks? In this particular case, if she has to abort the fetus, she has to end the pregnancy. What she will require is the permission or the opinion of two doctors. What if it is beyond 24 weeks? In that case, she requires what is the opinion of the four medical board doctors. And at the same time, this can only be done on the grounds of fetal abnormalities. This is what is present under medical termination of Pregnancy Act of 2021. If you look into the second criteria, what do we have? We have two doctors opinion that that particular woman has to take if it is between 20 to 24 weeks. This has to be read with medical termination of pregnancy rules of 2003. What does the rule speak about? It says women eligible for termination of pregnancy up to 24 weeks. All type of women will not be eligible. Only few people are eligible. Who are these women? Thank you. One, they have to be survivors of sexual assault or rape or incest. They have to be minors. Change of marital status during the ongoing pregnancy. That woman has become a widow or she is divorced. Women with physical disabilities. Mentally ill women including mental retardation. The fetal malformation that has substantial risk of being incompatible with life. Or if the child is born, it may suffer from such physical or mental abnormalities. Women with pregnancy in human humanitarian settings or disaster or emergency situation as may be declared by the government. This is what we have to look at. If you look into it, what we have is this for the married women, but there is no criterion for the unmarried women. So there was a recent case that happens in Delhi. A 25 year old unmarried woman who was around 22 weeks with men from a consensual relationship petitions the Delhi High Court. She asks for the permission to terminate the pregnancy. Pregnancy, the Delhi High Court looks into it and denies the permission. It said that the petitioner being an unmarried woman was not covered under the law. So she goes to the Supreme Court of India. The Supreme Court looks into this particular issue and ultimately goes on to say that the law cannot discriminate between the married and the unmarried woman. So this is what the Supreme Court said when it comes to this particular case. Let us take a broader picture of what did the Supreme Court say when it comes to this particular verdict. When you consider this verdict, what has the Supreme Court said? When you consider the objective of the law, there is a law that is drafted by the legislature. The legislature basically has an objective. The objective is to assist the women. One, it speaks about minors. Second, it also speaks about change of marital status. That is, a woman who is married, but all of a sudden her husband passes away. So she becomes a widow or she divorces her husband while she is pregnant as well. So during this particular period, she has the capability to abort the fetus. So what we have is a change of environment. Similarly, an unmarried woman might also have a change in the environment as well. Initially, she might want to continue with the pregnancy, but then she might not know about the pregnancy one point of time. And at the same time, she might want to continue with the pregnancy, but there is change of relationship status with her boyfriend. In all these cases, if you are segregating married and the unmarried women, it is violation of Article 14, which is right to equal 
equality says the supreme court of india so if you are giving permission to the married women where there is change of circumstance similarly such a provision should also be given to the unmarried women because there is change of circumstance because there is change of environment as well she might have believed in a particular perception that perception might have changed right now and as a result if you are not giving this power to the unmarried women it is violating article 14 says the supreme court of india added to it let's take the example that a woman is married she might get divorced as well and at the same time her husband may leave her as well similarly if an unmarried woman continues to have pregnancy what if her boyfriend does not take care of her or she loses the job or there is a domestic violence in her place as well all these cases have to be taken into consideration women's material circumstances will also have to be taken into consideration since this is not considered in the delhi high court the supreme court goes on to say that we are allowing what is called as aborting the fetus in this case where the delhi high court judgment has been overruled so what did the supreme court make use of the supreme court in this particular case basically made use of what is called as the purposive interpretation so what is this purposive interpretation let's say we have what is called as literal interpretation and we have something called as the logical interpretation when you look at the literal interpretation whatever is the law a similar the thing is extracted and the same is concluded by the supreme court or the high court so you have the law whatever is the wordings of the law the same is interpreted by the supreme court the high court or any other court but when you look at the purposive or the logical interpretation the spirit behind the law is taken into picture the purpose behind the objective of the law is taken into picture so in this particular case the rule may say that it is only for the married but if you look at the purpose the objective the spirit behind the law a purposive interpretation says that even if it is an unmarried woman because of the change of circumstances that has happened we have to give the permission to the women which is what is called as purposive interpretation that has been made by the supreme court of india if you are reading further into this particular judgment the supreme court also says the rights of the reproductive autonomy dignity and privacy under article 21 right to life given unmarried women the right of choice on whether or not to bear a child on similar footing of a married woman it said that the term women also includes person other than the cisgender women who may want to terminate their pregnancy thus paving way for members of the transgender community to also get abortions as well this is what the supreme court said when it comes to treating equally the unmarried as well as the married women further if you look into this rule it also speaks about rape this rape can also be marital rape as well that is the rape that is committed by her own husband so with respect to medical termination of the abortion a woman would also be able to abort the fetus if it is even the marital rape so remember the rape is also interpreted as marital rape only under the abortion law where it has said if it is done forcefully by her husband she would still be able to abort it says the supreme court court of india there is another point of view that the supreme court has also taken into picture when we spoke about the law what we had was two doctors who have to give their opinion for the termination of pregnancy of 20 to 24 weeks and we also required the opinion of one doctor if it is less than 20 weeks as well but in most of the cases doctors ask personal questions if there is a major who is above 18 years of age if the person goes for the abortion there are questions that are too personal in nature that the doctors ask the women they ask questions whether the women family knows about it they ask questions that are too intricate and personal to that particular woman is it part of the law no then why are the doctors asking the next question is if we look into this particular law it speaks about the mental state as well this mental state is not to do with medical term mental state but it is a general parlance it is just a normal word so the supreme court has also clarified when we are speaking about the mental state it is the mental state of the woman if she feels so that she has to abort the fetus then the doctors have to do says the supreme court of india so whether there is a threat to the mental or the physical state of a woman the supreme court has clarified that on each woman's 
own estimation of whether she is in a position to continue and carry to term her pregnancy or not she will decide it so the supreme court has clarified that it is not medical language but it has to be understood in common parlance says the supreme court of india so the gist of this entire discussion is that married and unmarried women should be treated equally and the delhi high court verdict of this segregation that only married women are entitled to abortion between 20 to 24 weeks is not right and the supreme court has clarified even unmarried women are entitled to abortion and they do not require any type of marriage certificate says the supreme court of india further this article also takes a note of what is the situation on the ground women said activists say a lot more needs to be done so that women feel safe to take a decision on their bodies india's abortion law are moving in a progressive manner while we have country like united states of america which the so called developed countries tries to act in an orthodox and a traditional and a conservative way snatching away the abortion rights of the women but india has been progressive says this article and at the same time in india besides patriarchal mindset and social stigma unmarried and single women face greater hurdles in exercising a right over their bodies thus leading to higher risk and complications many women are forced to go to the quacks when there are unwanted pregnancies says this article if this particular issue is not sorted this can also lead to mortality rate increasing because these women may go to the quacks and ultimately they may lose out on their life as well if you we look into the statistics the national family health survey picks spousal violence physical and sexual faced by women in the age group of 18 to 49 years at 29.9% and unsafe abortions are also a leading cause of maternal mortality says this article so in order to reform this happens to be a landmark judgment delivered by the supreme court but more has to be done at the ground level is what we have to understand with this article now let's look into the next article this article says how can india reduce its impact on global warming let us try and understand what is this article all about we have the united states of america's environmental protection agency which has pointed out that since the industrial revolution which started around 1800 human activities have released large amounts of carbon dioxide due to fuel burning and other greenhouse gases such as methane nitrous oxide compounds of sulfur phosphorus ozone into the atmosphere thus changing the climate of the earth if you look into the statistics further atmospheric carbon dioxide levels have increased by over 40% from 280 ppm in the 18th century to 414 ppm in 2020 and the greenhouse gases level by over these 200 years if we have to look at data with respect to india india had 170 million people in 1800 which has risen in 1.4 billion people today and industrial revolution started only after india's independence 75 years ago while it has helped india in reduction of poverty what it has led to is increasing carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases so this article basically is speaking about what is called as the climate smart agriculture so india will have to ensure that whenever it is continuing with the practices of agriculture it has to come up with a new approach so that there is sustainability of the food grains and at the same time we also have climate resilient practices so if we speak about the climate smart agriculture what is it it is basically an approach that helps us take certain actions to transform the agri food system towards green as well as the climate resilient practices this has three main objectives one sustainably increasing agricultural productivity and incomes adapting and building resilience to the climate change and reducing or removing greenhouse gas emissions wherever possible so what are the measures what are the innovative measures that we have to take as part of the climate smart agriculture the first is what is called as the renewable energy maximizing energy efficiency and shifting away from the fossil fuels are important steps that farms can take to reduce their climate footprint what do we understand by this let's say for example what a farmer requires is the extraction of groundwater 
to extract this ground water what he has to run is the motor so that it fetches the water from the ground and it is ultimately put to the crops as well so he has to make use of the fossil fuel he has to make use of the diesel generators so on and so forth in order to prevent it what is the innovative measure instead of making use of the diesel generators what we can make use of is the solar panels so if solar panels are used and ultimately we are able to take the ground water and put it on ground for the crops that will help in renewable energy so basically if we are making use of energy production by making use of solar panels or wind turbines that is an example of innovative measure so here we are not burning the fossil fuel we are not making use of the diesel generators if we make use of it there is release of the carbon ultimately it will impact the climate so instead of it what we can make use of is the solar panels the article here points out at such an example farmers have come up with some admirable methods with the help of agricultural professionals by making use of solar panels in their fields so that they can avoid diesel for the groundwater pumps this is one such example the second example is with respect to the water management water smart technologies like furrow irrigated raised bed micro irrigation rainwater harvesting structure cover crop method greenhouse laser land leveling reused wastewater deficit irrigation and drainage management can also support farmers to decrease the effect of variations of the climate so basically if we can make use of the existing renewable energy and apply this to the water management the amount of water that we are extracting from the ground can be comparatively reduced the third is in reference to adoption of appropriate mitigation technologies such as cultivation of tolerant breach to overcome the climate stress what do we mean by it let's say for example there are new types of crops that we discover these crops that we discover or come up with new innovational technology like the biotechnology so on and so forth are able to adapt to the changing times let's say if this particular crop like the green gram called as bm2002 of 1 chickpea and pigeon pea which is called as the bdn708 were brought on selected farm fields in aurangabad district and these would be able to sustain with less amount of water and they are also drought resistant as well so if we are able to come up with new types of crops and they require very less amount of water that is an innovation as part of the climate smart agriculture finally what we can make use of is the tolerant breach in livestock and poultry let's say for example we have indigenous variety of cattle these indigenous variety of cattle should be used in the farming if we are importing some of the cattle from some other country they may not be used to this environment so making use of the indigenous variety so that they are able to adopt to our own ecosystem is the way forward so these livestock breeds may not be highly productive but they are highly adaptive to the unpredictable nature and also have low resource footprint as well these are some of the innovative measures that have been taken in the past and they should be continued to be used in the near future as well the government at the same time has also brought about number of reforms as well what are these reforms let's take the example we have the national mission of sustainable agriculture this is one of the programs initiated by the government of india as part of the national action plan on climate change then we also have pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana this pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana which basically envisages per drop more crop is also promoting micro drip irrigation to conserve the water as well then we also have parampara grath krishi vikas yojana as well this is another objective where it is promoting organic farming so the government has also taken measures as well so what is the significance of climate smart agriculture this article currently goes on to say climate friendly agriculture offers new income sources and is more sustainable and in the journal carbon management india's carbon emission could also drop by 45 to 62 million tons annually and the author further goes on to say india has about 20 to 39 percent vegetarians 70 percent of 
the population eat meat, mainly chicken, mutton and fish. India, with its main rivers, has a vast coastline which is rich in fishes and fishes have high nutritional value and help in reducing carbon footprint. Thus, with farmers, meat sellers and fishermen each contributing to India in reducing our carbon footprint, we can hope for an exemplary nation, says the author. So, what is the way forward? Reduction of greenhouse gases from all agriculture and non-agricultural sources, not just by the government, but all stakeholders involved. Structured training is also important. People have to be given an awareness as well. They should be made to understand the climate change event, fine-tuning of the gap between management practices and essential practices. It is not just about giving these practices to the people, monitoring it constantly, whether they are implementing it or not, has to be monitored over a period of time and finally some of the flagship farmer oriented programs are needed to improvise skills in agriculture as well as the allied sectors it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article now let's look into the next article this article says indo bags cleaner city award for sixth year mp ranks first among the state the article here is basically speaking about swat survey survey what is it this also happens to be called as the cleanliness survey this is being conducted by the ministry of urban affairs since the year 2016 and this happens to be the sixth year if we have to look into what the survey is all about it will basically look at urban sanitization cleanliness and survey will be conducted on the basis of this survey that will be conducted across multiple states in india a ranking would be given this ranking basically creates healthy competition between these cities and ultimately the government the urban local bodies the state governments as well as people would also fight in a healthy competition so that they would want to upskill it they would want to make sure that their city ranks up in this surveyction survey. So the primary goal of such surveyction is to encourage large-scale citizen partisanship and at the same time the urban local bodies also take up the responsibility, people also take up the responsibility towards making their cities better places to reside in. Do note, the surveys are carried out by the Quality Council of India. This can be very important from the preliminary examination point of view. What is this article saying? This article currently goes on to say, Indore has been adjudged the cleanest city of India for the sixth year in a row, while Madhya Pradesh is the cleanest state in the country. This important ranking can be important from the preliminary examination point of view. Surat is the second cleanest city, followed by Navi Mumbai, which ranks a close third in the category of cities with a population of 1 lakh and more. If we consider the population category of less than 1 lakh, we have Panchkarni and Karat from Maharashtra back the first and the third positions, while Patan from Chhattisgarh back the second position. We have Tirupati, which received the Best City Award in Safai Suraksha category, Haridwar in Uttarakhand, which received the award for the Best Ganga Town in more than 1 lakh population cities, Shivamogga in Karnataka received the Fast Mover City Award. The state award saw Madhya Pradesh emerge as the clean, cleanest state in the category of more than 100 local bodies, relegating Chhattisgarh, the cleanest state of the previous three years, to second place. Maharashtra emerged as the third cleanest when it comes to the ranking. Similarly, Tripura got the cleanest state award in less than 100 urban local bodies category, dislodging Jharkhand, which had won in the last two consecutive years. Jharkhand and Uttarakhand received the second and third places respectively. So, this article gives us a ranking and this creates a healthy competition and this competition it what allows the people to make sure that their city ranks on top is what is this article all about now let's look into the next article this article says medicinal fungi may be suitable for identifying novel drugs let us try and understand what is this article all about this article says there was an analytical study of the medicinal fungi carried out by the researchers from institute of mathematical sciences chennai and they show that some chemicals they secret may find use in the novel drugs what is this medicinal fungi? Basically, there are fungi that contain metabolites or they can be used to produce some metabolites through what is called as biotechnology to develop 
prescription drugs so what is a medicinal fungi they are the fungi that contain the metabolite what is this metabolite we have all heard of what is called as metabolism what is this metabolism this is a set of life sustaining chemical reactions so we have an organism the organism has some chemical reactions within its body which is called as the metabolism so in biochemistry a metabolite is a intermediate or the end product of metabolism so a secondary metabolite is where there are some chemical compounds that fungi they produce when they are stressed so we have the fungi they are stressed at times and whenever they are stressed if they release a chemical that is what is called a secondary metabolite so secondary metabolites are chemical compounds that fungi produce whenever they are stressed this enhances the fungi's ability to survive so this article currently goes on to say whenever they are stressed they release a particular chemical this chemical is called as a secondary metabolite this can be made use of to produce some of the drugs says this article this is where the author also gives some of the examples we have cordycepin a secondary metabolite produced by cordyceps species of fungus it is known to have anti tumor properties this is one such example not only cordycepin in general several category metabolites are known to be beneficial efficient for humans in terms of both therapy as well as the health this article further speaks about its use in the medicine medicinal fungi belongs to two taxonomic divisions namely basidiomycota and asamycota mushrooms belong to basidiomycota an example is agaricus biosphorus the button mushroom is an example which can be consumed then we have fungi belonging to ascomycota division and they are generally not mushrooms say this article so in the near future what they are planning to discover is more secondary metabolites so that this can be used for preparing some of the drugs which is helpful for the human beings it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article now let's look into the next article This article says army expects to boost firepower with the induction of the artillery guns which are these artillery guns it includes Dhanush Sharag M77 ultralight howitzer additional K9 vajra howitzer and the advanced stored artillery gun system so this article says that in the near future what we will have is more guns and the howitzers in our armory and this will further enhance the defense system in our country as part of the assignment you have to put on the comment section which are the indigenous ones which are the foreign made if any please put it on the comment section all that this article is saying is about increasing the armory strength all that you have to do is just read through this article now let's look into the next article this article says india abstains on unsc resolution condemning russia's referenda this article here is speaking about india abstaining against the unsc resolution we will have more editorials and columns in the next 2 to 3 days as of now you don't have to go through this article but there'll be more editorials and columns we will take it up in an elaborate way in the next 2 to 3 days now let's look into the main practice questions write a note on abortion law in india and explain the significance of supreme court's recent interpretation climate resilient agriculture practices can help reduce hunger and poverty in the face of climate change discuss please write all your answers on the comment section peer review do give positive feedback to your friends answers so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best